Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Discussion with Cam. In this episode, I had the privilege of speaking to a professional rugby player from Munster. His name is Keenan Knox. Um, his link will be down below to his Instagram. Please can you go give him a follow if you enjoy his video, well, my video with him speaking in it. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It would really help me a lot. Um, other than the little intro part, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Apologies in advance for the audio and for some of the video. Unfortunately, with me being in South Africa and my wife not being very strong lately uh, and him being in Ireland, there were a few hiccups, but his audio is awesome. Mine still needs a little bit of work. Don't know what's going on there, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you. Cool, so how's it, Keenan? How are you doing? Yeah, good thanks to yourself. No, I'm, I'm very good, thank you. Uh, so thank you for doing this interview today. I really appreciate it, especially all the way from Ireland, which makes it even cooler. Um, so the first question I've got is, what is your name and Instagram name? Um, so name's Keenan Knox uh, and Instagram name, just Keenan Knox, straight up, all underscores. Okay, perfect. Um, so obviously, I mean, everyone that's watching this doesn't know, but you're a professional rugby player for Munster. Um, so what inspired you to become a professional rugby player? Obviously, I mean, I'm sure it's been a passion for you since you're young, but like what sort of inspired you to carry on with your dream? Um, well, obviously, well, everyone in South Africa growing up knows how big of a part rugby is in, in everyone's lives. So it definitely is a big focal point uh, right from a young age and that. But my family would be a very big sporting family and um, just any, any sport really you just kind of get into. But rugby was one that kind of took a grip on me early on that I really enjoyed and I enjoyed the, the kind of physicality and the skill and, and just the technicalities and all, all of that involved in it. And um, yeah, it just kind, of, just kind of grew as I started playing the game and watching it and seeing kind of the attraction it brought to everyone and people watching all around the world and it's such a global game. That kind of grew that inspiration. And uh, just through that, I really kind of saw that as being a real goal of mine to, to kind of play professional rugby one day. Okay, cool. So like... It's, it's kind of just been a passion of you that's just sort of grown throughout your schooling career and then obviously through being in Saka, watching probably one of well, World Cup winners um, <laughs> or watching them. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, uh, okay, so what, what gave you the courage to, to obviously leave South Africa and, and move to Munster now in Ireland? And I mean, obviously it was a really hard choice for you to, to leave the country that you were born and raised and but obviously the opportunities are better. And I mean, what, what gave you the courage to sort of take that leap into the next step of your career? Um, well, there were quite a few things involved in it, but um, I'd always been looking overseas in terms of education and uh, getting into a good university and that kind of thing, just studying overseas. And then uh, as I was going through high school and the sport kind of, became very important to me and I, I kind of got the feel could be a career path for me. Uh, I kind of turned and used that as a way to, to get myself into a good, a good place to, to study well and really actually push on with, with the rugby. So in terms of coming over to Ireland, and I, I, I would, I'd always been looking abroad really um, and seeing that there are really good opportunities for universities and, and just as global as the game is, I saw a real opportunity overseas and uh, in particular in Ireland where the game was growing and in the Pro 14 competition and European Championship Cup. Uh, it's just lots of opportunity over there and it really excited me. And it's, I've always been an independent kind of person but someone that looked, looked very keenly to a challenge that was put in front of me. And uh, when, I, when I got a call saying that there was an opportunity over here in Ireland, uh, I saw it as a big challenge that, that I could kind of take head on and see how I fared in it and uh, kind of just go for it, leaving everything behind and that. Um, so I came over, gave it a full go and really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, it's been ups and downs. It's been difficult. It hasn't been easy sailing the whole way, but uh, I think I'll be better for it in the end. And um, it was a good challenge and I've enjoyed it. And I'm still enjoying it as, as, as it is today as well. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. I'm sure the the attraction of playing in the Pro 14 is, is something that 
huge, you know, it's, especially as a South African going over there, you know, it's not many people actually get the opportunity to, to move to Ireland and actually play professional rugby there. And I mean, you've obviously just got to take the opportunity when it comes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, yeah, there's like the different competitions all around the world and that's, they all have their own different attractions and different fan bases and different styles and Northern Hemisphere rugby has been on the rise in, uh, for the last while now, but in particular, as I was going through high school and that, they were kind of starting to dominate a little bit more in terms of England coming through, Ireland coming through, even Scotland pushing and Wales as well, being number one in the world as well. So they really started to compete in terms of the, uh, against the Southern Hemisphere team. So I just wanted to really give myself a challenge and new experience. And it's a great opportunity that I got. Okay, awesome. So, I mean, it's, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, so the next question I've got for you is what emotions did you go through and make your, your debut for Munster? Because obviously that's a huge opportunity. And I mean, you obviously made your debut and then you made your, your cup debut with uh, sort of the Pro 14 and, uh, you know, that biggest step in your career was, I mean, was that a big, was it scary or was it more, you know, I deserve this, this is my time to sort of shine? Um. Yeah, I feel those words you mentioned there would have been involved, but um, obviously with any challenge that you kind of faced with and that there's always going to be nerves. Like anyone tells you that they have, don't get nerves before a big game or even like if you compare it to a big test or something like that, they're going to be lying. And um, so lots of emotions going through it. Um, fortunately, from my, from my perspective, I... I kind of got a chance. So the, my first opportunity with the senior team would have been in a preseason game. We played against London Irish. I was actually playing against one of the guys I would have idolised at the school from my class, Pat Saliers. Uh, I was playing against him in my first game for the senior team. And um, yeah, in that game, it wasn't there wasn't really too much on the line. It was just a preseason game, so you kind of they, they kind of give you an opportunity to see how you fare at that level. So I got an opportunity there and. I did reasonably well there and I, I, I kind of impressed well enough to play in the next preseason game as well. And then after that, they gave me a chance in the first, in the opening game against uh, the Dragons from Wales in the first Pro 14 game of the season. And then in that game, I, was, I, I started off on the bench and I, I was waiting there and you kind of see the clock ticking over and you're realising it's coming to your time that you might be coming on. And uh, then all of a sudden, that time just goes very quickly and you on the field and next thing you know, you're in the middle of play and everything, all these nerves and everything actually built it up to be just come, come down to you doing your job on the field and doing what you've done before, what you do day in, day out, day out at training and all of that. So obviously the nerves, the nerves and everything can, can sometimes get the better of you at times if you, if you let them, but at the same time, I think they, they're necessary. Also show that you, that you care and that you prepared for the moment. Um, but when you get on, when you get on to the field, and then you just kind of fall back into your natural state, and you 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 do what you've prepared for, essentially. Yeah, I mean that's that's when all the the training sort of kicks in for, you know, you kind of forget everything else, you know, all the emotions then set aside. It's just okay, I've learned this, you know, I, I can do it. Let's just get it done now. <laughs> yeah, exactly that, and like. The funny thing is, a lot of the time people ask, like my mother asked me, could she hear me shouting from the sideline or, or something like that? And the honest truth is you don't really hear much from the, from the sideline. Like even, even from, there's one thing, you feel an atmosphere, but you can't hear anything else. That People could be screaming at you, saying whatever they want, and you wouldn't hear what they say. You feel an atmosphere. So like, that's one thing that, that's very good about Munster and our stadium, Tom Park is the the fans are literally incredible some of the best fans in the world and the atmospheres in that stadium are second to none on the big european nights and pro 14 nights the big games literally it's something you just can't describe until you've experienced it and you've actually been on the field for it yeah i mean that's really cool especially that the fans are, they make they make such a big impact especially on a game and as you say like you can't hear anything from the middle of a rugby field you know you, you, can't hear that one person sitting in the corner shouting, Keenan, you know, it's, you can hear the songs like that they sing or whatever the case is, but you can't hear, you know, everyone in particular. But yeah. Uh, so the next question I've got for you is what has been your biggest struggle to stay committed to your dream? 
and becoming an international rugby player potentially in the future. And, you know, it's sort of signing that contract that you did to, you know, to give up the opportunity of playing in South Africa, to play in Ireland, but which is obviously a huge attraction, uh, you know, to move to Ireland, to play for Ireland, you know, was, was it tough? Um, and then obviously what was the struggle that, you know, that you found chasing that dream of yours? Um, there's, yeah, there's a lot, a lot in there. Obviously, I'm, I'm not going to lie and say it's trying to become a professional rugby player and trying to strive for international honours and, and all of that. And anyone that does set out to try to become a professional rugby player will set out to try and become an international rugby player. So I play at the highest level they possibly can. Um, in terms of the biggest struggle I've had with it is, especially straight out of school, uh, you want everything now. We have this thing of instant gratification uh, in the world. It's, it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And uh, straight out of school, it's, it's exactly the same in rugby. You want to be coming out and you want to be going straight into the main team and you want to be playing get week in, week out against the best players and all of that kind of stuff. And it's, it's tough that you have to develop a lot of patience and realize that you have to kind of buy your time and build that experience and uh, work on your skills and uh, train really, really train really hard and just build yourself individually as a player and kind of buy into the team environment. And there's lots of different things that go into play with it. But I'd say the biggest struggle I've had was from the beginning, actually developing that patience and kind of, you, you, there's a lot of frustration when things aren't going your way and you maybe you don't get selected for the team or uh, you have a bad game and, or something like that and you get dropped or whatever the case is, just patience and kind of having that understanding that everything will come in time. And I know, I know I'm only young and I'm, I haven't, haven't faced half of it yet, but um, that would be probably the biggest thing that, you, that I would have faced so far, just developing that patience and understanding that things will come. You just have to give them a bit of time for them to come. And then, yeah, just in terms of being an international rugby player, yeah, obviously, growing up, you always want to be playing at the highest level you possibly can. And uh, I've always, I'd always dreamed of playing for South Africa and just on the international stage. And then when I got the opportunity to come to Ireland, I came here with the intention of being a pro rugby player, playing for, playing for Munster. And then as I spent my time here and that, uh, I really saw with this last deal that I got offered that I could be here for, for, for a long time. I, I really enjoy being here, the side of the world, and enjoy the club and the teammates and the people and the country and all of that. And I'd literally be an honour to be able to play for Ireland, play international rugby, any opportunity I get to play international rugby, especially for a country like Ireland as well, such a special place, lots of special people around. It would be a huge honour. So anything that came my way, I'd definitely take up with both hands. Yeah. And I mean, like, as you said, it's, there, it's, it is, it's, you know, not many players actually make it to that level and to such a high level to, to play international rugby. And I mean, especially like every, every person's dream is to just, you know, leave school, start playing for your boyhood club or whatever club you get accepted into and then just start playing, you know, and as you said, there's patience, you know, it takes a long time and it takes a while and, you know, you got to just stick it out and try your best, obviously. Um, so last question uh, is what advice would you give to someone chasing a dream obviously you know you on the right path to you becoming an international player now and um, obviously you know you're still young you're 21 uh, you know what what has been like sort of a quote that you've lived by um, and then what advice would you give someone um, well in particular uh uh, Menzi from your last uh, interview actually said the same quote that I kind of lived by my whole time. I had a post of it up in my up my room from when I was really young. It's something my, a post my mum gave me when I was young was uh, uh, forgetting it now. But hard work beats talent when talent refuses to work hard. That was always the one that I kind of lived by. And in terms of chasing a dream, and that's that's definitely the one I'd, I'd go for. You can be very talented in that, but especially now I've realized 
going from schoolboy level and going to professional level, it's 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 not the talents that gets you gets you to where you want to be and gets you to that high level. Obviously, talent talent is great and you can't get enough of it, but it's the mentality and the mindset and that that really sets you apart from the other people around you and um, really sets the the best teams and the best players in the world apart. That just that that killer attitude and just being a ruthless mindset in terms of their training and the way that they play and they're just they're just not going to give up an inch uh, and give you anything for free or give you anything easy and uh, so any advice I'd give I'd probably just be really focus on your on your mindset really work hard uh, and be prepared to work hard but one thing I've always lived by is setting high like high goals uh, really long goals you have you have your short and medium and long-term goals and set them high set set high goals for yourself aim big um, but with that comes the responsibility if you're aiming big you have to really put yourself down and actually work really hard and be prepared to work the amount that's required to get to those goals and they're not going to come easy you can't set a goal and not be prepared to work for it so yeah that would be my advice be able to set yourself goals and, and meet the short-term ones Aim for the medium term, and the long term ones will come if you if you can. Put it, putting that work in, keeping your head down, keeping focused. That's what I have to say. Okay, awesome. I mean, that's some some great advice, especially for, I mean, you coming in as a as a young rugby player, and you know you've been through the school path, you've trained hard, you've stuck with it, you've obviously got your long term goals now, which, uh, you know, is is. Becoming a first team starter, obviously, I mean, that's what everyone is aiming for. And, you know, to stick it out and, you know, have that killer attitude, as you mentioned. Um, so in, at the end of each video, I do like last sort of words, last, you know, little remarks or whatever. Um, but just a quick question, and then you can say whatever you want for the last little bit, um, is when does the season start? And obviously we can check scores online and whatever. And... You know, what are you, what are you sort of like wanting from the start of the season? You know, are you going to be like sort of on the bench or, you know, obviously you're wanting to start. <laughs> I mean, everyone wants to start. Um, but, you know, can people look forward to seeing you throughout the season? And, you know, are you excited for it? And, you know, that, that sort of stuff. And then your final few words, give yourself a shout out if you want, you know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, obviously that's that's the goal. We'll, we'll see we'll see what happens with the season. Uh, we've our first game scheduled now. We're going to be finishing off the last season's or well, the Pro 14. Um, so we've got our first game coming up on 22nd of August. So it's about five weeks away now. Um, so we've got our first game is against Leinster. So that'll be a very big one. The defending champions. Um, so we've got Leinster. Then we've got another game against Connacht, and then we've got. After hopefully we win those two and then we go into the semi-final and final over the next few weeks then and then start the next season again. So after having a long break from not playing at all, it's all going to come back all at once and we're going to go straight into the deep end, like knockout stages, essentially at the end of the, this, this competition. Um, so really looking forward to it. I mean, it's been a long time, lots of tedious hours training and all of that. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm going to try to put my best foot forward and see if if I can work myself into a position to be playing week in, week out. And uh, definitely think it definitely think it's a possibility. It, nothing nothing's going to come easy. I'm prepared to work for it. And yeah, I guess we're just going to have to see how it goes and kind of just see how performances go. And hopefully we can pick up a bit of silverware in the next few weeks when we get back. It'll be a big team goal of us to win this Pro 14 hour when we get back. And, and really kick on from there and start the start the next season. Well, uh, we're a very ambitious squad at the moment, and we've got a good few combinations, a few, few new players coming in, a few guys coming up from the academy. So we've got young guys, old guys, a good mix in the team, and there's good uh, good coaching group, good player group. So I really think we've got what it takes to start winning some trophies and that. So that's the next plan. Now we get to deliver on, on, on our words. So those are probably my final remarks over there. 
Okay, sweet. Uh, thank you again so much for, for doing the interview. Uh, obviously, if anyone is interested in seeing Tina's content and the stuff that he posts and social media, um, please follow the link in the description below. And Keenan, thank you so much again for doing the interview. I really appreciate it. And best of luck for you and your, your career and everything to come in the future. Maybe we'll check in with you again sometime soon. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for having me. All the best. Okay, cool. Cheers, Keenan. Bye, bro. Cheers. Bye.